1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Faith gives us victory. If we have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, we can have victory. In, in 1 John chapter 4, chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, this is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? The world throws stuff at us, friends, constantly. It seems so big that we can't deal with it. But who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I see this happen. People believing in the Jesus and becoming the Son of God and victory coming into their life. We see it in the Philippines. I remember going to this one place called Gamay. And Gamay means small in Filipino. And Gamay is a little village that's far flung. We had to go as far as the four-wheel drive would take us. Somebody said we had this old 10-year-old land cruiser and you go four hours in that land cruiser and afterwards you pray God will heal you or take you home. It's truly a rough riding, you know, scenario. And we'd go four or five hours until we're at the end of the earth. There's no more earth. If you look out, it's water and the, the first thing you would see, if you could see that four thousand miles away, is the island nation of Palau. Then we have to get in a boat. And we go as far as that boat will go to this little island. 30,000 people that have never heard the Word of God. They've heard about God, but they've never been given an opportunity to have a personal experience with Him. And there's no electricity in this town. There's no, the kind of plumbing that we have here. Uh, the, the only uh, bathroom was this cardboard box made from these cigarettes. And the name of the cigarette company was Hope. Hope. That's the name of the cigarette company. And so in big green letters was H-O-P-E. And you know, we're staying in this house. It's so hot. We're staying in a in a in a this this place with a GI sheet metal roof and there's no electricity for a fan. You're using the hand fan. You're trying to sleep and at the same time fan yourself with a hand fan. Have you ever tried to do that? Because what happens you you fall asleep and you quit fanning yourself and you get hot and you wake back up, you know? And uh, the mosquito net, what it does, it catches mosquitoes, you know, inside the net. In fact, the Australian missionary lady, a rat got inside the mosquito net with her. And the rat got traumatized and started jumping around and she went hysterical and started jumping around and the mosquito net's just jumping all around and I tell you, I felt so sorry for that poor rat. <laughs> you imagine being in there with an Australian and the Australian said, that's Australian humor. It's a true story, but that's Australian take on humor there. But uh, it is hot, and you, in that, that, that cardboard uh, bathroom, you walk in, you step in, a, the only time you want to go into the bathroom is at night, because everybody's staring at you. They're looking at you. And because uh, they, you're different, and they always just constantly have their eyes on you. Hundreds of people. So the only time you venture to go to the bathroom is at night, and you sneak in there, but nobody tells you there's a pig tied near the the outhouse. And you step in, and all of a sudden there's this grunting noise, and you lose all hope. <laughs> you know, your your heart jumps out of your mouth. And uh, so I just said, forget this. I'll just wait until we get back to town. And anyway, the next morning, they serve you breakfast. Have you ever had flying fish for breakfast? Flying fish. I, they had this fish, and it was so pungent. It was so strong, so powerful. And I looked at it. We were having some fish and some rice. And I'm going, what is that? I'm looking at it, and I look at it again. I look at it a third time and said, that's a flying fish. They, don't, you know, have you ever seen the fish that fly? They fly about the length of a football field. And uh, that's some powerful fish. But anyway, we had a meeting there that night. We brought our own generator. There's no electricity. And uh, so we went to the plaza. And we had people started coming. Hundreds of people started coming. But there was no wires to hook in to at the plaza for our generator. You know, think about it. If there's no... If there's no electricity, why would there be wires? So I went to the hardware store and said, I need some electrical wires, I need some, a socket, and I need some light bulbs. 
And the hardware lady looked at me like, well, what planet are you from? Why would I sell wires in, in electrical sockets and bulbs if there's no electricity, you know? I didn't think about that. I'm just, you know, in America, when you're born with electricity, it's in your DNA, you know? You don't think about it, you know? You flip the switch, the light goes on. You know, that's the way it works. That's the way it's supposed to work everywhere. Well, it didn't work that way. So I had to go door to door, and this guy had an old fluorescent frayed wire light tube. And so we hook that up, we get the lights going, we get the sound going, and we begin to preach the Word of God. And I begin to share with the people of Gamai. There were hundreds of people there that night. I said, you know, you have heard about God all of your life. But before you can enter into God's kingdom, it's not enough just to know about Him. You have to have the greatest miracle of all miracles. The miracle of the new birth. Yeah. Which is a personal experience with God. You can't comprehend it. It's incomprehensible. But you can experience it. Because He will come in and take over your life and live in your life. And I said, you've heard about Him all your life. I only had 10 minutes because my voice, I don't know why, but it left me. And so I gave a challenge. I said, how many of you would like to receive this miracle in your life? The hands just shot up immediately. And they began to wave their hand frantically like, don't forget to see my hand. Don't forget to see my hand. And I said, if you want to receive Jesus Christ, and you know what happens. You've been in Chile. And so I said, if you want to receive Christ, I want you to come forward. We're going to pray with you. They rushed forward. I thought they were rioting or something. They came forward so quick, I got afraid that maybe they were upset with something I was doing. And they prayed to receive Jesus Christ into their life. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. He, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's stand and let's pray for just a moment, okay? There might be someone here this morning. I'm the visitor. But I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you're here this morning. And maybe you've heard about Jesus Christ. I've got good news for you. Maybe you've heard about Him, but you've never had the opportunity. The opportunity of opportunities. And that's to have a personal experience with Jesus Christ. Let us pray and let's bow our heads for a moment. Father, maybe there's someone here this morning. And maybe they've heard about You. But maybe they've never made that commitment to invite Jesus Christ to come in and live in their heart. And have that new birth, the miracle of the new birth. Maybe you're speaking to someone this morning by your Holy Spirit. We can't do it. We can't do it through human emotion. It only can be done by the Holy Spirit. If you're here this morning and maybe this, and the Spirit of God is speaking to you and you've heard about the Lord, but you've never received Him as your personal Savior, I want you to raise your hand quickly because I want to pray with you. Is there anyone here? Just raise your hand quickly. I want to, I'm just going to take a few seconds. Anyone? You, maybe you've heard about the Lord but you've never had the greatest miracle and you want Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Anyone? Anyone? Yes, I see your hand. Let's pray together in solidarity with this one raise their hand. Father God, we, we're sinners. And we ask you to forgive us of our sin. And come, and Jesus, come into our heart. And live and take over our life. In Jesus' name. Give us the miracle of new life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.